Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Live at the Hive. Uh, exciting one today after uh, a long, hard season for the bees. It's now time to uh, to take off that precious sunny at the end of the season. And that's what uh, Roger is going to be doing down in West Sussex this morning. Um, he is joined by some friends down there uh, this morning, Martin and Daisy, who I'm sure he'll introduce and tell you about, uh, as well as our very own Martina that's down there, um, cracking the whip and getting Roger into line. Uh, so good morning, Roger. Uh, good morning, Richard. Uh, good morning, fellow beekeepers. Um, sorry it was um, uh, a little bit early start. And just to show how international these have, have come after about six or eight, I had an email, well, woke up to an email this morning uh, from a man in Tallahassee, uh, that's in Florida, uh, telling me that uh, it's actually 4 a.m. there at the, at the moment. So um, to show that it, um, so um, uh, if, you, if you did get up, Rob, then, uh, then welcome. And just to, um, uh, I checked up, uh, Tallahassee from Slimfold is uh, 4,362 miles uh, as, a direct, uh, um, uh, uh, as a direct distance. Um, against that is, uh, is the fact that um, uh, Barnsley, uh, which uh, of course is international as well, um, is 280 miles away. And that's where Richard's sitting, hopefully in his shed, um, uh, conducting things from... Uh, from that distance away. Uh, anyway, uh, this morning we are going to put on uh, clearer boards. <clears throat> now, those of you who know me might uh, know that, that I make no uh, 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 no no point of the the, uh, the the fact that other people do handle my my honey. Quite frankly, I'm I'm too busy. And um, Martin and Daisy, who are both members of Whisper Green Beekeepers Association. They are semi-commercial beekeepers with about 100 colonies, something like that. Um, they take my um, uh, my honey and um, uh, they extract it and do all the things that um, uh, that would normally be done. <clears throat> so what we're going to do this morning is to uh, just put the clearer boards on and show you how we do it. Now, it may well be a bit different than the ordinary beekeeper, because don't forget, Daisy and Martin are semi-commercial, uh, so time is is a pressure, and they need to do things um, a lot quicker than perhaps the ordinary beekeeper does. Don't forget also that they have got um, several out apries, um, so they'll probably clear one, uh, one out apri, and then with the same equipment, move it on to the um, uh, on, onto another one. So what we're going to do is to uh, we've got eight, I've got eight colonies here with honey on, and what we're going to do is um, uh, for the uh, uh, for you folk, we'll probably do three to tell you exactly what we're doing, and uh, then I will carry on doing normal. Um, uh, normal inspections, and then Martin and Daisy will carry on with the uh, with the other five. <laughs> now, I've um, uh, I have actually been asked if we record these. No, we don't. Um, and I've got a little bit of proof here because um, uh, Martina turned up this morning and said, "Dreadfully sorry, I forgot the um, I forgot the um, uh, uh, I forgot the tripod." So we've had to improvise. And um, you know, bearing in mind we come from Sussex. Uh, we, 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 we tend to uh, improvise occasionally. So uh, there, there, there's a proof. So let's get on then. Um, what I have to uh, remind you is that um, there's only really me you can hear through the uh, through this microphone. Although Daisy and Martin, and in fact Martina, will be fairly close uh, to me, uh, uh, it's probably only me uh, you will hear. Now, when we get on a little bit further, um, please excuse the fact that I might have to go from one side of the apron to the other for various bits of kit, um, because literally I'll just put things down where um, where I need them and away from the colonies that are uh, that we uh, that uh, we are going to put uh, uh, clearer boards on. So, okay, let's uh, let, let let's pitch in then. Do you want to do these first? Yeah. Go around, go around that right way.
Well, I'll try and talk you through it. Um, what um, what Daisy's doing is smoking the uh, the entrance. This is a double brood chamber a colony, but I've been using it um, throughout the year also for uh, producing uh, bees as well. So I've been taking away um, frames of brood for uh, for somewhere else. So we've got four uh, yeah four supers above that. So hang on, wait just a minute. I've got to get the glasses on. Well, I'm rather pleased I haven't got a wooden leg at the moment. No. Okay. So, this, this, of course, will show you that, um, that we haven't deliberately set things up in the last 20 minutes. Oh, whoops. Oh, a bit white there, Martin, didn't they? Okay. So we're going to take the uh, the queen excluder off, and this is one of a type that I came across in um, in, in Canada a couple of years ago, and um, I thought they were quite uh, quite useful. Um, they were certainly using them uh, quite well. Um, they're very, very similar to the ones that um, <clears throat> the wire excluders that we have with, with the with, with the frames. Now we put that back. Uh, Daisy just putting the uh, uh, the um, uh, queen excluder uh, down at the front. That will be clear to bees in in a few minutes. Right. Hang on, wait a minute. Do we want to crack these? Oh, yeah. Right. Right. We got to. We we got a few nerves here, but what we do is we uh, we 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 crack the um. Uh, crack the supers, so that the um. Uh, so that the um area in between where the bees usually put uh, uh, put a little bit of uh, a comb uh, that exposes it and uh, the bees clean it up so that when you take the supers off you don't get uh, honey dripping uh, everywhere now Daisy and Martin do it a little bit differently than when I did it I, t I turned them round but I'm not um, it's a different way of achieving the same thing do you want do you want to see if you can manage that, Daisy? Okay. Now, Martina, if you can, uh, if you can come in on that one quickly, you you can see the honey, exposed honey there. That um, yeah, and on and on and on on the underside. Now that you get, of course, between each. Uh, box. So all we're doing is breaking it, so the bees uh, clean it up, and it doesn't um, doesn't drip. Okay. What I'll do afterwards is explain the sort of clearer balls we use, and I think we've got about three different uh, diff different types here. Oh. Now, it hasn't been a great year for honey, um, or certainly not in West Sussex here. Uh, we had quite a, quite a poor May and June, and then all of a sudden we had probably the um, uh, the biggest nectar flow that I can ever remember in, um, in July. <clears throat> but um, this is a tribute rather to the uh, local locally adapted bees that um, I didn't um, I didn't have to do any uh, feeding which I know a lot of people did and I came across bees in early July that were um, that were on the point of starvation now this is just a little bit of a this is a little bit of a, a a, uh, uh, 
a fiddle. Are we? Yeah. Are we? Are we this colony hasn't produced uh, six supers. <clears throat> um, I hadn't. I've got another colony that I had three supers on, and the bees. Uh, uh, the bees try, try, try to requeen themselves, and I had a problem getting um, getting the queen in there, and they got so small. In fact, I'm going to show you the colony uh, a little bit later. They got so small um, that they they couldn't really uh, defend it. So I put three. The last three supers came from that one. So it, it it's it. They, this colony hasn't produced all this. So are we going in there? Yeah, okay. Now I'm hanging on to a handhold that I've placed on um yeah, the, the these are the supers that came off the other ones, so there's, there's virtually nothing in them. Uh when you come to collect them, Daisy and Martin, have a look through those. You may find um quite a lot of empty combs in there. This, if anyone's interested, is the old-fashioned um, eight-inch uh, roof. They haven't made those, I think, for well over 50 years, so you can tell how old that um, uh, that roof is, and I probably got it second-hand. Yep, okay. All right. Right. Um, Martin and Daisy are going to light their smoker and carry on, which, of course, will allow us to uh, to carry on and do what we uh, what we intended uh, doing. Um, just one thing while you're here, Martin, I'd like to show people. Martina? Yeah, all right, you do, do this one. Uh, this here is a, a WBC super that I've modified uh, for a national. I'll just put a, cup, a plinth around the bottom and a plinth around the uh, uh, top. And uh, okay, it, it, it only takes um, eight or ten frames, but um, but it, um, it it does a job, and I've probably got fifteen or twenty of those. Okay, right. <laughs> um, I think what we do now is the colony that uh, we couldn't find the queen, or I couldn't find the queen in last um, uh, last Thursday, I think. Uh, we'll have a look for the queen, mark her, and then do the job that we were going to do, which was to uh, sw uh, uh, swap positions. So I'll just go and get the kit that I need. It's just one here, Martina. A little bit of smoke in the entrance. I need or think I need. Oh no! I better. I'll, I'll tell you what. Just to, just so we don't sort of move around too much, I will explain the uh, the principles of the clearer board. I think so. I'll go and go and get the clearer board. So let's use this one um, as an example. Um, you've also got the brood chamber there with the supers above. Um, now, there are several ways of clearing bees from the supers. The old fashioned way, of course, was um, uh, a smoke and shake. Um, and all you did, and in fact, if you've got, only got a few colonies, then you can do that. You do not need uh, clearer boards. So all you do is you you start with an empty super. You you start at the top, take each frame out, shake the bees off, and brush them off. Or I prefer um, my my version of the bee brush. The problem is with bee brushes, in my experience, is that it um, they do uh, tend to wind bees up. Um, once you start rolling bees, um, they get upset, 
And, of course, they do get caught in the bristles as well. And I think anybody who's um, uh, kept bees for any length of time will agree um, uh, uh, agree with that. Um, so you then uh, smoke, smoke a top, and that should drive some of the bees down. It obviously won't drive all of them down, but it drives some of the bees down. You then take the frames out, shake what bees off you can at the front of the hive, not anywhere else so you tread on the bees. And then um, put them in the empty box. And when you've finished that particular box that you've done, that then is ready for um, uh, taking all the, all the others. So that is one, one way. Um, there are chemical ways of doing it, um, which um, I won't mention any, any, any names, um, but um, you, you probably see them in catalogues. Personally, I don't like chemicals. Uh, any 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 more than uh, unnecessary. I've never used them myself, although uh, when I was younger, there was a thing called benzaldehyde, which I think was an artificial oil of almonds, uh, and that was quite a pungent, um, uh, a, 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 a pungent uh, a product, and they would drive bees uh, away. If you read the old books, they used um, carbolic acid, um, what was called Calvert's number five. And I've never, ever used that in 57 years of beekeeping. And I don't know anybody who, um, who has, apart from some of the older beekeepers used to, you, you, you used to talk about it. So they are the other methods. Probably the most common method is um, what's called a clearer board. So you've got a board, various kinds, with some sort of mechanism in that's got a one-way uh, system. So the bees can move from the uh, supers back down into the brood chamber and not return or not return uh, very quickly. Now, the, the one that's been used um, probably most, and everybody knows, is the port of bee escape. Incidentally, we're, we're putting a video together on this, so um, uh, uh, so hopefully in the next 12 months that should be uh, coming out. The Port of Beers Gate, which to the best of my knowledge was uh, patented in the United States at the back end of the 19th century, so it's 120, 130 years uh, 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 old. You all know it, the uh, oval thing that fits in the um, uh, uh, fits in the crown board stroke uh, uh, clearer board. Um, it's got two... Uh, two springs are one side and two the other, so the bees actually force their way through the springs. The problem with those is that um, they very often get um, uh, uh, gummed up, or if you get drones in the uh, in the um, uh, supers, uh, they can the, 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 they they can block the port of bee escapes up. Probably the best ones are those without any moving parts at all, of which. Um, there are some fairly um, uh, common ones, and they're, they're very often plastic that you uh, uh, just fix onto an existing um, uh, a board. And I think I can show you one here. Wait just a minute. Now, this one is called the um, is called the rhombus, and what you uh, have got is you've got a ball with a hole in it. This rhombus escape. I'm sorry, I haven't got one um, to show you, but this rhombus escape has got a space underneath, so the bees in the top. that are become queenless, and th this is a principle of a, 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 of a clearer board, the bees at the top become queenless, the bees at the bottom say, hey, we're queen, right? Oh dear, how do we get down there? Through that hole, they can't get out here, so they walk along and then come out of these uh, 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 gaps here. And that is a principle of most of the um, this type of clearer board. Hang on, I'll just give this back to Martin and uh, 
and 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 Daisy. Uh, going back to what else? I'm I'm moving around a bit because I'm trying to work with them as well. I mentioned the um, plastic. Um, uh, it was netlon type stuff, isn't it? I suppose it's greenhouse shading. Um, but you see, the the bees have built onto on, onto there. Um, I don't know what they've done here. Um, they they they, they tack, tack toes down. These still work okay. I will explain the um, the principle of these in in, in a minute. I'll we'll make sure that them that that that. That they're not messed around. Now the one I use is uh, I got the idea from uh, Dave Cushman's website. There's a triangular one, and he got the idea I think from um, a Canadian uh, beekeeper. And I I modified it. This is the one that's on the uh, Dave Cushman uh, website, and the idea is that you've got some uh, uh, little uh, Flints, lats, call them what you like, thin bits of wood, only about eight or ten millimetres high. And you get a gap which does exactly the same job as a rhombus uh, escape. Now, with this one, what I thought was the bees will come down here, congregate there. Where's our queen? She's down here and go down um, these um, passageways and out. And my thinking was that if you had two bees going down and you'd, you'd have quite heavy traffic going out of the, um, uh, out of the um, exit there, uh, that no bees will return. In fact, I can tell you that these bits inside aren't necessary at all. And that last one I showed you from uh, Martin, that Martin and Daisy have made um, is, is proof of it. Now, if you want to, you can make these um, yourself. These ones were made up with a quarter of the open mesh sheet that you get, which I think is 460 uh, mils, uh, millimeters square. So that should be 230 square. Um, you can make them a bit smaller if you want to. Um, it, it doesn't need to be a good um, a mesh like this. It could be plastic as you've seen that Martin and, 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 and Daisy have used um, or it could be um, uh, perhaps of, of, of something else a little grill or something like that uh, that you can uh, pin on there um, I brought these sidebars because they would be absolutely ideal you might have to cut them off a bit they would be absolutely ideal. So all you do is just um, nail those like so, so with a gap that the bees can get out. Um, you can use uh, shallow sidebars uh, if you like. Um, I think that will be uh, okay. You can use perforated zinc, all sorts of things uh, like that. Now, porta bee escapes are quite slow. They just send down a maximum of two bees at a time. So they will go down from the supers into uh, the brood chamber fairly slowly. This type are very rapid to the point on many occasions where I've had all this area here filled up with bees and within a couple of hours uh, too. Uh, so I've got a uh, I don't know what that is. Probably two by one, that material there. You certainly want two inches, 50 millimetres uh, there on a strong colony. But on the other hand, if you haven't got a strong colony, you're not going to have uh, m m many supers on it. So it needs to be quite um, uh, 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 quite deep. Also, the top end, I found you need quite a, quite, quite a, quite a, um, a depth there uh, too because the bees do... Uh, a cluster here okay in a situation like this you don't see what's happening um, but it, it's probably going to take these bees up here certainly half an hour nearly an hour to realize that, that mother isn't up there um, oh dear where is she um, uh, and then and then the clearer board will 
um, will uh, start to work. So that's the principle of a clearer board. I will just say one thing that um, that I didn't um, didn't mention um, was that when Daisy put the um, the queen excluders in front of the hive, there was a little bit of honey exposed. Um, a little bit of honey like that um, won't really uh, start robbing, and the reason is that if you've got bees that are robbing, um, if they are allowed to clear up what they've got, um, they will. They seem to be satisfied, and then no problem. Uh, if you uh, if you uh, take the source away, um, they're looking around for more, and that's when they will. Um, uh, will be a, a a problem. So, Richard, um, does that cover the uh, uh, the clearer boards? Richard, sorry, I am here. Richard, I pressed the wrong button. Can you hear me? Uh, I can now. Yeah, excellent. I, uh, I, David... I, I, I thought I thought I thought you were upset about uh, West Sussex being in a different country than Yorkshire is. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm quite happy for Yorkshire to be a different country. Um, you are? David, okay. okay. <laughs> David asks the question, um, why do you remove the queen excluder? Oh, because there are just so many bees that get down in here. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, they, they, will, they will get blocked out by the queen excluder. But it's, it, it's, it, 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 it's not needed anymore. Because we'll put the supers back to uh, clean up later. I think Martin and um, excuse me a minute. When are you likely to be coming back for these? Yeah, uh, they, they 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 will be coming back at six or seven uh, tonight, and there'll be very very few bees uh, in the in the supers. They will extract them, and then they'll put the um, uh, put the wet supers back for the bees to clean up. Now, putting the wet supers back, I better not put that there because I uh, I will need it. <laughs> putting the wet supers back, if you put, um, uh, let let let's say that's probably the wrong one. Let, let let's pick on this one. If you put those uh, three supers back, wet straight over the uh, brood, brood nest, irrespective of whether there's a queen excluder on there or not, what will probably happen is that the bees will clean these up and put the honey, um, in the residual honey, in the bottom soup. That's what usually happens. Um, if you see some of the older type um, crown boards, there's a little hole at one side with a slide in. The reason that's there is so that you can put the crown board on top of the brood chamber, open the slide, put the supers on the top, and then you've got a small hole that the bees um, will go up and uh, clean the supers out and then take all the honey down um, in, into the uh, uh, brood nest. Um, what they're really, in human terms, what we think is that the um, uh, uh, the bees seem to think that they can't defend what's up here, so they take it all down into the, into the brood nest. Yeah, bye. See you later. Yeah. Um, so there's um, eight eight colonies. Clear boards put on in uh, less than half an hour. So uh, yeah. Um, so um, a, a, a modern version of that is a piece of plastic and you can see where it's come from uh animal food bag is uh, is brilliant it's nice tough uh plastic um and uh i've, I've used it uh, for, for for many things if you just cut it a bit bigger than the um the size of the um uh, the boxes just put a small hole in just about big enough to get the um get your finger through and all i do is just fold it Fold it and let the corner off, and and and, and that is good enough. You just need one bee uh, to get through, uh, and then place that on top of the brew chamber with your supers on top, and um, you can, um, uh, it, yeah, place the supers um, 
at sort of dusk. Uh, don't do it during the uh, uh, during the day, or not if you've got an, an apron uh, close to uh, um, uh, other houses, um, because it does excite the bees. If, you, if you're in an out apiary and all the colonies are in the same situation, it uh, it re really doesn't matter. You're okay with it. In fact, some beekeepers, um, commercial beekeepers, just leave the supers out uh, anyway. Um, I, I wouldn't advocate that with a with a um, uh, with a small scale amateur a beekeeper. So um, you can put the supers on at um, uh, at night. And by the morning, they're all clear. Okay, there'll be, still be bees in there. But then you can take those uh, supers off, split them, put them down in front of the hive, lean, lean them up, take this off, cramble back back uh, on, and then you're ready for whatever you want you want to do, um, autumn work, which could be uh, treating for varroa, feeding, or uh, anything uh, of that nature. So um, that's what I do. It's nice and easy. Um, it's uh, it's cheap. Uh, these don't take up uh, too much room, and um, uh, you haven't got any specialist equipment or um, any uh, any problems. Excellent. So um, is, that, is, uh, is that okay, Richard? Yeah. Matt um, asks, uh, do you ever insert an empty super below the clearer board for big colonies? Uh, no, be, um, because the um, uh, the depth I've got is is is, is absolutely fine. Uh, I know some people do. Um, if they want to and it works for them, then uh, then just uh, 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 just do it. Um, some people also put an empty super underneath the existing super, so so that one would be an empty one. Um, again, I don't do that um, because I haven't found it necessary. But that doesn't mean to say that um, that it's wrong because if 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 it works for you. Uh, just uh, 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 just do it as uh, if you're not harming the bees i don't care what you do <laughs> excellent anything um, else uh yeah steve uh just wanted to point out um he d i don't think he saw uh, daisy check for the queen on the underside of the queen excluder uh but i think she did after she'd smoked it and uh, before she put it down at the front but uh, uh he just wanted to uh yeah I, yeah um in in all honesty, uh, the more you get involved with bees, I mean, Daisy is an experienced beekeeper, or I consider she is. She's been keeping bees now 16 or 18 years. Um, she's a master beekeeper, and um, uh, I will say that I've got um, a lot of respect for, for, uh, for Daisy because she did, uh, she got to master beekeeper entirely on her own. She didn't go to any uh, special classes. She didn't go to any presentations that tell her how to, pass an exam or anything like that she just went and did it and um she uh um uh, she did uh, she she did really well um she is um uh, a field biologist uh, by degree and you know she understands uh, biology and uh as a result i think it's improved a, a beekeeping she, she's actually a very good beekeeper martin's not quite so uh experienced he's been keeping bees i suppose five six uh, years uh, less but they both worked together and both of them were our demonstrators at whisper green for uh, several years until um uh until they they, they moved house um increased their, their uh, bee operation and simply just didn't have enough uh, uh, didn't have enough time um now uh getting back to i think it was uh, matt, matt matt's point was it about looking uh, for, yes. the, for the uh, look about looking for the queen I don't think I've ever seen a queen on the underside of a, 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 a queen excluder. Um, if you think about it, any self-respecting queen is going to be um, uh, on the brood frames. Um, she's not going to um, like smoke. Fertile queens don't like the light, so she is going to move away um, a pretty sharpish. And uh, I know... Certainly, beginners are told always turn the uh, queen excluder up to see if the queen is um, is on there. In fact, I do it myself as much as anything to concentrate people's minds that you've got a queen in there, and that's the one bee that you've got to be uh, uh, got to be looking after. Um, so, I think the answer to the question is that it's likely to happen so very, very rarely that it's probably not worth 
um, doing as a matter of course. If there is a slight problem uh, with a queen, and it's very unlikely, uh, then you've got enough colonies that you can uh, you, you, you can put it right. Um, now that might not be what um, uh, what examiners uh, want to hear, but um, I'm sorry, we we are dealing with uh, reality. They were here um, for half an hour, and they they probably lost 10 minutes or more going, getting the smoker lit up and that sort of thing. You can do these sort of operations very, very quickly uh, if, you, if, if you have to. Uh, another question. How many frames will you usually leave for the bees? Uh, where, what do you mean, how many frames? Uh, I presume the questioner is asking, do you leave a super on for the bees? Um, I've started to do that um, with uh, some colonies at the teaching apiary. Not this year because we didn't take any um, honey this year because um, we concentrated on expanding. Um, but uh, yes, I do um, for um, uh, for demonstration purposes um, because if you've got a teaching apiary, um, you yeah, thanks, Martina. I wonder what I was going to do with that. I couldn't bother you for it. <laughs> um, yeah, with a teaching apiary, you uh, you need to put various sensible options in. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a believer in doing things just because somebody asked for it. I think you've got to think about it. And certainly leaving a super of honey is, um, I think, a good, a good thing for bees, especially for um, a, an amateur a beekeeper. Now, if you've got um, these type of bees that you can keep on a single brood chamber, um, if you just leave a full super on top, you are going to be okay. Now, uh, I know a beekeeper in Northampton, Brian Dennis, who's, who used to be a BBKA um, a trustee. Um, he's fa been fairly heavily involved in beekeeping um, uh, teaching um, for you know 30 40 years um got about 30 40 colonies very experienced beekeeper um he leaves always leaves a super above and he also leaves the queen excluder in now when people started asking me about it and th this has been a uh something which is coming in the last 15 or 20 years i suppose um partly because people don't necessarily want all their honey and partly because they would rather bees have honey than sugar. Anyway, my advice was take the queen excluder out so that the bees can go up through uh, and, um, and, uh, and eat the honey. And my thinking was that the queen would, might get left behind, but Brian assures me that he's never, ever had that happen. So although I don't advise people to do it one way or the other now. What I do say is that um, I know somebody, very experienced beekeeper, who's got a lot of colonies, been doing it every year for um, uh, uh, for a long time, never had a problem. It's up to you. Of course, th th there are several issues um, with, uh, with that which you need to think about. One of which is if you've got drone comb, um, as I'm sure I've mentioned before, if you've got uh, because bees tend not to put pollen in drone comb, what you very often get, um, I know we're looking at the wrong wrong side here, but what you very often get is if you've got drone comb in the bottom super, uh, the bees tend to leave an arch in the middle uh, uh, combs, presumably expecting the queen to come up there and lay, because, of course, bees do not recognise uh, queen excluders. Uh, so if you've got worker in there you'll probably have um honey and pollen right down right, right down to the bottom now the point i was going to make um don't forget this is live so i, 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 I i'm completely unscripted so I'm, I'm, I'm perhaps trying to think other, uh, about other things as well um if you've got bees coming up and, the, and they they've got drone cells that are empty um, that's it. They 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 won't be able to get get any food. So I would only do that if you've got uh, food right uh, certainly at the, the um, in in the centre frames, 
right down to the uh, queen, uh, queen excluder. The other thing is that bees won't go across even the narrowest gap in winter when it's cold. The colder it gets, the closer they, uh, and, the, and the tighter they cluster, and uh, they want food immediately, usually above them, but they're happy with, with it aside, now, uh, on side. Now, the problem is, and I've seen this several times, um, people have got perhaps a double brood chamber, brood and a half. The gap between the uh, top bars of the bottom box and the bottom bars of the top box is uh, eight millimeters ish. I've seen bees starve out beneath that in really cold weather um, because they won't go across that gap to um, uh, to get the food that's uh, half an inch away. So. Um, I think you need to be just a little bit careful. You need a sort of conduit between the brood chamber and the uh, and the uh, and the super, which of course is what um, Martina showed. Let me just yeah. Uh, this is this is this of course is a um, normal um, uh, a, a conduit that, that you would get. Now, incidentally, that has been down there for half an hour or so, and there's no bees on there. Uh, now, the bees are actually flying. So it, what's probably happened is there's a little bit of a nectar flow. I'm not saying a great one. A little bit of a nectar flow. We've got one bee come down here at the moment. But if there was no nectar flow at all, um, that would have been dry by now. Uh, Roger, um question has come in um could you use the you know the animal feed bag with the hole for uh feeding uh unripe honey or partially filled frames back to the bees uh yes you can um not sealed for some reason bees uh, object to moving um uh sealed food or, or indeed pollen um so um i would i would uncap it i think and i would probably um, put something in between, like perhaps an empty super, so it, it's, it's divorced. <laughs> uh, can I go back, Richard, please? I, I must must do this. If you've got a clearer board on, of course, everything above that is um, undefended. So you must make absolutely certain that um, uh, that you've got no holes above. Uh, above. Otherwise, um, the uh, other bees and wasps will spend... Uh, uh, spend the rest of the day uh, helping themselves, uh, and in fact, that's something I'd, I'd better do uh, when we we're, when we finish this. I'll go around all these and uh, and check. I think I've got one colony there. In fact, I think Martin, if you if you um, if you come around here, I think I've got one colony that um, uh, oh no, all right, um, they've uh, the, the the they've dealt with that. But there was one there that's um, a super that was um, uh, damaged. I've dri driven a couple of nails in. Uh, but hang on just a minute. You you, you just see the bees in, in, inside, I think. That, that That's okay. There won't be a problem with that. Uh, so you need to be uh, careful that um, that you've got um, uh, uh, that, that you've got no holes. Now, this is one um uh one problem that um uh, i find with these blunt ended hive tools because people um get the hive tool and that and they do this and i've seen ever so many in fact i went to one teaching association um one teaching apri association teaching apri um several years ago and uh i was sort of invited a demonstrator and uh there were about five or six groups I suppose uh, and I was taking one and when, when I finished uh, finished um, mine, my group, I looked round to the other group and they were taping up with parcel tape the, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the joints and I said well what are you doing and there were so many holes in the boxes and the boxes were uh, much better condition than mine are and uh, you know it was simply that people had 
people have done this with with with, with bad uh, hive tools. So you need to need to make sure that's okay, and also making your boxes as well when you make them up, um, uh, make sure they don't sort of uh, uh, come apart. Right, um, I think probably Richard, I've done enough on that, and they must be horribly bored by now. Um, <laughs> Uh, but sure. it, 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 it's it's nearly five a.m. in Tallahassee, so perhaps Robert's um <laughs> Robert's woken up now. Uh, excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Roger, for your time. Well, I uh, I, I, I I have got more to do. Um, all right, I okay. Can, uh, right away. I, 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 I can go on um uh, quite a bit because there's all the other things that I'll tell you what I'll, I'll keep going, and uh, you tell me when to stop. All right. Okay, Are you okay. okay, Martina? Ah, Ma yeah, Martina. Sorry, I, I forgot. Uh, Martina's grandpa is coming from, <laughs> excuse me, uh, coming from Czech Republic tomorrow. He's flying into uh, uh, Stansted. Martina's going up uh, up to get him. He's, uh, I think he's been keeping bees most of his life. I think he's probably, uh, him himself is a third generation beekeeper, I think. Martina's, Martina's a fifth. Yeah, that, that, that works out, doesn't it? Um, He's 90. Or is he over 90? He's 91 this year. So, so yeah, okay, he's 90. That's uh, all, all thereabouts. Um, what I'm hoping to do is interview him uh, for something of this nature. We're not sure yet what we're going to... He, 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 he might not agree to it. But Martin has obviously got to be the interpreter. And because he's 90, and he's probably a little bit on the frail side, uh, he might not be able or willing to do a, a, a live thing. So we might do it re re with a recording. Um, and then, of course, hopefully, fingers crossed, we can learn a little bit about how they keep bees in the Czech Republic, which is never a bad thing because um, uh, how people keep their bees and their, their whole, sometimes their whole culture is um, of, of, of other countries is based, uh, is, is, is uh, honey based. Um, which certainly if you go to Eastern Europe, I found that, um, uh, that um, you know, beekeeping is handed down from one generation to another. And, um, you know, there's, there's lots of things um, that, um, uh, that are uh, family orientated. I tend to use honey a lot more than we do, um, you know, in the kitchen. And uh, there's some very good mead makers out there way too. So. Anyway, so we, we'll try and do that. Right, what I have got, Richard, I, 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 I'll tell you what I've got. Um, I've got the colony that we were, um, I couldn't find the queen on, um, well, we found her in the end. She was on the, on the side of the box. Um, so what to do with that um, and how I'm going to deal with that. I've also got another one that I think is queenless. I'm fairly certain it's queenless. And um, I'm going to do a little test, which we, I've got a queen in the cage a live queen in the cage and I'm just going to put that on top of the frames to see if um, uh, what the reaction of the colony is uh, to that one so uh, I don't quite know oh um, yeah I was also going to um, quickly show people how to use this type of high strap in fact Martina and myself did a um, um, did a video in um, yesterday afternoon and uh, we're, we're hoping that again will be um, online to help help uh, help beekeepers use these because uh, apparently there's nothing online for these. So what 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 you're you're in charge, boss? What do you want me to do? Um, yeah, <laughs> feel free. Um, I've got another couple of questions as well, so whichever you like. I'll tell you what. Let let's go. I think the quickest one is this um, colony that I think is queenless. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's a case of um, a queen disappearing. And if you want to know about disappearing queens, uh, just have a look on uh, Dave Cushman's website um, for, for, for queen problems. So what, I could quickly go into that, I think. Um, what I've got with me, um, I picked up yesterday a, a, a failing queen, um, and I put it in a cage, hoping that we could do this little uh, demonstration uh, this morning. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, open it up and um, put um, uh, an empty cage new cage and uh one with a queen in and see what happens okay
I'm going to rush around a bit because um, I guess people, some people might want their breakfast. I had mine about four hours ago. And poor old Robin Tallahassee has probably got to wait another couple of hours for his. So I think it's this one uh, here. So just a little bit of smoke in. Um, now, this originally was a colony that um, I couldn't get a queen in. Um, that had three supers on that I put on the top of that other colony there. There they are. There, there, there they are, look. These are the uh, of, uh, queen cells that I put in, and they, they just would not accept any, uh, uh, any, any queen cells. Now, um, what happened was uh, they were going away absolutely fine, and um, uh, then all of a sudden... Um, they put up a supersedure cell. I think there's one one there. Put up a supersedure cell. I can just uh, take that out and show you. Uh, and uh, and she failed. And I've had several attempts. Uh, I've had several attempts to um, uh, to get queen cells in here, and they just wouldn't accept. W wouldn't accept anything. Um, so um, there's still uh, a few bees here. So we'll ju and I'm pretty certain they are they are queeners. So I'm going to put that has got a, a queen in, and this one hasn't got anything. And we'll see uh, see what happens. Uh, Roger, while we're waiting for that experiment, uh, I've had a, a question about. Uh, uh, do you put your super above or below the brood box for winter? Oh, <laughs> um, this keeps coming up. People who put super of food underneath the um, brood don't seem to understand that bees in, an, in a tree, in a natural situation, always have their food above. Because what they do is say, hang on, how's this going? Um, a little bit of activity, um, yeah. Because what they, um, yeah, you can't see me. Does it really matter? Should, should I stand in front of the uh, other camera? <laughs> uh, yeah, you could do. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's still still on the clamps. Is is, is that okay? Yeah, we see you. <laughs> Can you see me? Yeah, okay. Um, in a in a natural uh, nest, um, the bees have their food above them. Uh, or, or or above the brood, so that during the winter they can just munch, 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 munch all the way through. Um, and uh, uh, bees in winter, when it's really cold, they'll cluster very tightly immediately underneath the uh, food. When it's warmer, they will break partially, partially break cluster, and then of course they go out to um, uh, uh, on cleansing flights uh, or. Um, certainly in managed colonies, I've, I've seen evidence of the, um, going uh, within the hive, foraging within the hive and bringing food back to where, 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 where they are. If you put food underneath the brood, the bees are clustering uh, upwards, thinking that's, that's where their food is going to be. And they don't know it's, uh, know it's underneath. Um, I don't know anybody who, who uh, puts, um, puts supers underneath. Um, I think what you've got to do is actually think about what's happening, not just do something because somebody else says so. Um, always, 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 if somebody says something to you, challenge it. You don't have to do it um, openly, but just think to yourself, well, hang on, is this going to work? And as soon as you realize that bees <laughs> excuse me, always have um, food above them, you'll think to yourself, hang on, this is not quite such a good idea. Having said that, if you want to do it and it works, do it. Or you think it works, then do it. Another thing which um, is concerning me more and more is that when I was young, we used to have, even in West Sussex here, we used to have quite strong frost, quite heavy frost uh, in, uh, in mid-November. 
that tended to wipe out the wasps, all the wasps, because, of course, all the queen wasps uh, for next year, uh, they've gone, um, they've built up the fat bodies, gone, hibernated, and just left the, um, uh, the, the residual uh, work workers uh, behind. Um, these, the, and then, of course, the, the frost will take them out. <clears throat> these days, that's not happening. Because of the warmer weather, <coughs> um, the, uh, the wasps are living longer, the bees are going into cluster, and I'm concerned that the wasps will come in and uh, uh, effectively steal the honey completely unopposed. That's what, that's, that's, that's what worries me. Um, and in fact, Daisy, who um, who you saw earlier, uh, but, well, she's only just moved the last couple of years. She used to live a couple hundred yards up the road. <clears throat> and uh, she phoned me on one day, and I believe it was the 2nd of January, and said, I'm having wasps robbing out my uh, 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 my colony. So uh, we went and, went and had a look. Sure enough, it was. On the 7th, I, I lost one here, and uh, uh, you know if if they if they're going to do that, then um, uh, then if you give them a bit of help by putting a super of honey that's un um, uh, uh, undefended, then um, you know I, I, I think you're asking for a little bit of trouble. But if you want to do it, you do it. Excellent. Thank you very much, Roger. Um, uh, it's, it, 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 it's, it's looking as if this experiment isn't working very well. Oh, well, th there's definitely been an awful lot more activity on that uh, on that one. A couple of bees uh, performing trophy. Yeah, well, actually, Richard, it isn't very uh, isn't very strong. So I think, yeah, I, I think we can say that is um, that is is, is queenless. So M Matt wanted <laughs> to know why it's not accepting queen cells. Are there laying workers in there? No, um, right, I'll get back in front. <clears throat> yeah, can you see me? <clears throat> yeah, um, uh, yeah, I've I've kept bees for 57 years, and uh, if anybody else has been keeping bees more than uh, perhaps 25 years, um, they will probably realize a, a lot of changes. Um, with uh, w w with bees. Now, w the only thing you can say is that varroas come in at that at that time. Um, but there's all sorts of things that um, uh, that are, are come coming in. Uh, I'm finding it much much more difficult to um, to get queens uh, introduced. Uh, there's all sorts of things that are happening. It used to be. Uh, a case if you put a queen in a cardboard matchbox, and this is what all the beekeepers did cardboard matchbox, obviously not a, a wooden one, just leave it slightly ajar, put a queen and a few workers in, leave it slightly ajar. You can put it on a, on a colony and, and walk away and leave it um, because the bees would chew it out of the matchbox. You could go back two, three weeks later and there would be the queen um, uh, lying away, absolutely no problem at all. Um, <clears throat> I've tended to use these uh, puzzle cages of the type that you uh, saw over there uh, because I think they're uh, they're actually quite good. Um, I tend to use matches from a bigger box now, so I haven't got the number of uh, match boxes that uh, that w we used to have. Um, and what I've done is um, uh, uh, I knew, I've used butler cages as well, all sorts of things. I've always released them after 24 hours. Um, yeah, 24 hours a day. Um, and then all of a sudden, that wasn't long enough. And it was just about a turn of the century, perhaps a little bit uh, earlier. <clears throat> now, um, why? I don't know. Absolutely no idea why. Queen introduction used to be almost 100%, certainly 80%. Now I'd say it was 50% it's or less. Um it's not always uh, uh, easy to use a test comb either. <clears throat> not always, not always reliable. It used to be absolutely spot on. If you had a queen's colony, you put a put a frame of um, uh, young uh, brood in there. If they were queenless, 
they would um, uh, they would build your queen cell. If they were queen right, um, they uh, uh, they wouldn't. As 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 simple as that. You cannot rely on that now. <clears throat> cannot rely on it. Um, another thing, I've um, uh, you used to get if you've got a a, um, a prime swarm, big swarm, used to be a uh, a fertile queen with it. <clears throat> Smaller swarm, uh, always a, a, a virgin queen. That doesn't happen now. It tends to be the other way around. Very, very often you get a virgin queen in a big swarm and a fertile queen in a small, store, small swarm. But then I started hearing people saying that they picked up a, a, um, uh, a, a, a queen as a swarm. And I thought to myself, this doesn't make sense because the bees, if they haven't got a queen, what do they do? If they um, if they uh, leave a hive, swarm from a hive, <clears throat> the queen is um, is clipped. They go up under the tree. Ten minutes later, I realise the queen isn't there. Whoosh, uh, straight back uh, back down again. So I thought to myself, hmm, yeah, I I uh, I uh, uh, I'm a little bit dubious about that. But it's happened to me twice this year. Queenless swarms, and you know it, it. It just doesn't make sense. Now it's similar to the question uh, that was asked: uh, Why won't they accept uh, uh, queens? Uh, I've or, or or queen cells. I've absolutely absolutely no idea. Um, my guess is <clears throat> it's something to do with the pheromones. Uh, now, whether that's, well, I'm getting out my depth already here, but because I'm an engineer, I'm not, a, I'm not a chemist. But if you look on Cushman's website on the Queen problems, uh, you'll see that I've suggested there that we might be, it might be worth looking at pheromones <clears throat> just in case they're being interfered with in some way with either chemicals that are being uh, put into the hive by the beekeeper. I don't know about chemicals that are in um, uh, foundation, or perhaps what's coming in from the um, uh, f coming in from the fields. And I'm just wondering, in my fairly simple way, if um, there's not some sort of chemical reaction going on, which is telling the bees something different than what what uh, what is intended. So I'm sorry, it's a long-winded way, but I think there's a lot of these things going on that a lot of people, a lot of beekeepers aren't recognising simply because they've only just come into beekeeping and they're just accepting things as they are. Exactly the same as Varroa. I mean, to me, Varroa has completely devastated beekeeping from what it was. And in fact, uh, so would um, Tropilalax when it comes in because according to Samuel Ramsey, it's um, uh, he, he is the, um, uh, the American researcher who discovered that that Varroa don't live on uh, on haemolymph or um, don't consume uh, haemolymph. It's uh, his, his fat, fat body tissue. According to him, tropilalaps is far, far, far worse than uh, uh, the, than Varroa. Um, so that will be another phase, <clears throat> and probably current beekeepers will struggle if that gets here. Yet the new beekeepers coming in uh, will find a, find a way around it or accept it as it is. So, yeah. Uh, Roger, we have uh, had a question about whether or not you'll be treating for uh, Varroa now that you've removed the, or now that the supers have been removed. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you know me, Richard. I'm an honest chap. Um, since Varroa came about, and in fact, I've argued against uh, 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 treating a pro uh, prophylactically because I've taken the attitude that. Um, uh, that if you keep zapping uh, the bees, they're not going to build up the natural resistance, resilience, uh, call it what you like. And I've argued that right from the very, very start. Um, <clears throat> uh, there is a, a lot of um, uh, 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 good information, I think, being collated by uh, beekeepers, uh, quite good experiences about not... Uh, not treating. So, 
Uh, what I did for two years was not treat whisper green uh, bees or my own bees here. And the first year, I was everything was fine. This last year, uh, I had I think twenty six colonies in this apiary uh, here, and I lost uh, four. Uh, three of them were queen problems, and I thought, well, that's okay, that's, uh, that, that's acceptable. Problem is, with the green teaching apiary, I lost a lot of bees. It's only five miles uh, um, uh, distant. Um, you know, as a, 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 as a fly crows, um, exactly the same bees, exactly the same treatment. But I put 20 full colonies into winter there, and there were three came out quite weak. And uh, uh, I think I've written about this somewhere. On the um, on the 12th of December, they were flying absolutely fine. On the 30th, half of them were dead. Um, so that's only 18 days uh, apart. Right. Um, I, uh, uh, <laughs> I've thanked COVID this year <laughs> because um, we couldn't have uh, done any um, uh, teaching this year and we couldn't have supplied beginners with, uh, uh, with bees. Um, so um, we've, we had very heavy losses. Now, uh, that's only that's the same bees, same type of bees, same treatment, only five miles, five miles away. Now, uh, getting back to the questioner, <clears throat> um, I've clearly got to go back to treating. Otherwise, if 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 um, if, um, if restrictions are relaxed uh, next year, people are allowed to come into teaching apiaries all summer long. If indeed that happens, then um, uh, I, I need the bees. So. Uh, yes, I will be treating uh, this year. Uh, I have to say I'd rather not do it. Uh, but um, uh, it might be one of these things we get into a regime of perhaps doing it uh, every other uh, every other year. Uh, but yes, I will be doing it. I will be treating with um, uh, don't like advertising problems or not advertising uh, products. I'm just uh, telling you what, uh, what I'm going to use. Uh, and that is Apigard uh, with an oxalic acid uh, dribble in the uh, in the winter. So that's what that's what I'm going to do this year. Excellent. Thank you very much, Roger. We've been going uh, about an hour and ten minutes uh, or so yeah, and now, and, I, and and it's just started a drizzle here, Richard. So uh, I've got to I've got to close uh, close. That's great. Down. Thank you uh, very much, Roger, for your time. Uh, I'm sure uh, everybody will, uh, will really appreciate uh, not only what you've done, but your, your, your candour and your honesty as well. Um, we have got a video coming out uh, shortly around about uh, talking about clearing supers and, uh, and, and escapes and things, which, uh, which will cover uh, what Roger's been talking about today in uh, a lot more depth. So uh, look out for that coming out shortly. But uh, Roger and Martina down in West Sussex, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us. Yeah, OK. Right. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Richard. Yeah. yeah. That quote.